Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda, if this is your first time here. Welcome to my beauty entertainment channel, absolutely. So if you would like to follow me on social media, here is my Twitter and my Instagram. Super, super, super fun. So today is another installment of my Everything Wrong With Blank series. You already know what the fuck is going on, but in case you do not, have a seat. I have a series on my channel where I talk about television shows that I've seen like a lot and I talk about it's called everything wrong with it's just a video title it's just a video title but I talk about like television shows and I like share my opinions and my thoughts the only difference between these and my other ones is I've seen these shows like three four five times basically and they're bigger videos and they're longer videos as you will I don't know how long this is gonna be I am so sorry. I don't think it'll top the Grey's Anatomy video, which was two hours long, but I don't know how long this is going to be. I apologize in advance, but sorry. Okay, so in the past, I have done this on television shows. I've done this. Let's go down my list. Victorious, I, Carly, Glee, Grownish, Dance Moms, Hannah Montana, Euphoria, and like a couple months ago, Grey's Anatomy. Super fun. And so today, Wow, I'm really excited. Today we're doing another Shondaland show. Today we are talking about the show Scandal. Everyone knows what Scandal is. Like, come on now. It's a scandal. Everyone knows what Scandal is. So that's what we're going to talk about today. <sighs> Disclaimer. We're going to disagree. It's okay. It's a television show. It's a bunch of adults playing pretend. Like, we'll all be okay. We'll all be okay. We probably, we definitely <laughs> have different favorite characters and dislike characters. This is all really in good fun. All right, so like, let's ever remember, is it that serious? It's never that serious. It's a television show. So, okay, we understand now. Okay, perfect. So, like I do, I'm going to go through all of the characters and then just, 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 just walk with me. It's a learning process, learning how my videos operate because they're kind of all over the place. You're in class today. So the first section of characters we're gonna start off with are randos. Most likely, mo most of them are dead now. Um, plot movers. That's a good title, plot movers. <laughs> so choose Melly. I wish you would. It would restore my faith in humanity. But if there's one thing I know, it's that given the choice between power and love, men like you will always, always choose power. What did he do to you? 24 hours, Governor. If you haven't ended things with Melly, I'll have to do my job in life as you know it will be over. Is what I'm gonna call them, okay? First character up is friend Frankie Vargas. Um, so his death was sad. Oh, I'm gonna cry. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. You know, he was pretty boring though. Like, he didn't do anything. He didn't give us, like, he was a plot point. He didn't need to. He didn't need to be on the show post when he was on the show. Like he he wasn't. He would not have given us what we needed in the drama category. Like this is an H. This is an ABC show. We need. It's supposed to be as close to soap opera as possible. He wasn't giving us that, so he had to go. You would think it's because he's boring. Well, no. Susan Ross was also a really boring character, but she brought messy shit to the show. David Ross. Da What's Dave, David Rosen? Oh God, is also a really boring character, but he brought mess to the show. So like he could have done something more, but his mess that he brought was his death. Okay, he's just you know, he's dead now. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> that was a terrible. He started off a video. <laughs> oh, he's dead now. It doesn't really matter. Next, most of these characters are dead. Wow, I'm gonna just say the the cemetery. James Novak is my next character. So James Novak is boring, but not actually boring. I really like James. I thought he was so funny. I thought he was funny. I thought he was nice. I mean, I don't know how nice you can be to like get down with Cyrus. Like you're married to Cyrus and like, it doesn't make any, I know Cyrus don't tell him nothing, but like, mm. You have inklings. And he knew. Like at a certain point he knew because of course. He would keep being like Cyrus the terrible person but then never do anything about it. <laughs> He'd be like Cyrus you have to change and stop killing people and Cyrus is like okay but doesn't. And then everything is just fine and we move on next season. 
that doesn't make any sense, James. That doesn't make any sense. But he's dead too. So I stopped speaking ill of the dead. But like, eh. Here's my thing. Shonda. He didn't need to die like that. First of all, he didn't need to die. And then he didn't need to die like that. First of all, he didn't need to... He didn't need to die like that. Jake didn't need to shoot him. Like He knows he didn't need to shoot him like that. He knows he didn't need to stage a car. It was too far. That carjacking stage, it was too far. We went too far. He really fell to the gravel and we were supposed to move on from that. Like, Cyrus was sad for maybe all of six seconds. I mean, he was actually sad because like, you know, whatever. But we were all supposed to move on. I want justice for James Novak, actually. He didn't need, they, Jake did not need to kill them. They weren't really threats. Were any of those people going to like out B613? No. The only one who was kind of a threat was David and he can be swayed easy money. So like, it's not that serious. It was not that serious to kill him. And it wasn't that serious to kill him in such a brutal way. my summary of James. Next character is Edison Davis, horrible person. One of the worst people I've ever seen in my entire life. Horrible person, hates himself so much, and then hates everyone else around him because they're happier than he is. It's not my fault you are sad and lonely and depressed. He should go to hell. Assumed he will be in hell eventually, but he should go to hell faster than what he was going to get there in the first place. Next character is Andrew, don't know his last name, even worse person. Even you're even worse person than Evanson. Horrible and he's dead. I have nothing positive to say about him. He is currently rolling in fictional hell, burning alive. I was cheering on Olivia when she killed him. It should have been Huck who did it. I don't know. I know he had his issues. He didn't want to kill nobody. Well, he had he, you didn't kill him and then he tried to take y'all down again. Andrew, he's um a loser. You lost. He's a loser with, who's really reckless. You lost the first time. What would make you think you wouldn't also lose again the second time? Audacity. Next character in my, um, this category of plot movers is Elizabeth. Hate her, hated her, hate, hate her. She grew her hair out, got a flat iron and then chopped it all off again. And I hated her the whole time. It has so many hair changes and I've never once felt any sort of like likeness for you. First of all, I have no respect for the head of the Republican National Convention. Don't care if it's TV show, yeah, yeah. She's desperate for power, very desperate for power, very desperate for power to grab onto someone else's power, not desperate for her own power. She's, why is she always wanting to follow? She never wants to create something for herself. Does she not feel that she can? She's bouncing around Washington, attaching herself to other people's power because she failed at the RNC. Like try something else and stop being a leech. Maybe this lane of politics is not for you because when has the most I saw Elizabeth do any sort of job was when she was like working for Susan Ross and then she wasn't doing much. Kind of just standing there. Like vibing as a white woman. So I don't really know if she was good at her job. I don't think so. None of her candidates would ever win anything. Never mind. She's bad at her job. David Rosen. Really Elizabeth? I'm saying really to Elizabeth and David because really Elizabeth, David Rosen, that's who you chose. That whole relationship was terrible from all sides on all angles. They're both going to hell for that, but for different reasons. I'll get to David in a second, but um, Elizabeth, David Rosen, all of Washington, D.C., all of what not even because he likes she first of all it's bad because David likes Susan Susan like David that's why that's one but something what I'm talking about you want to date David Rosen really you don't have enough like vanilla paste in your it, just, it, it doesn't make any sense to me and I was like Lizzie no it's not giving but she's just scared to fail again. So she goes into like extreme desperation. Like you had to hang around Susan Ross all the time for a whiff of power. That's sad. That's just terrible and sad. And where did, where did this get her? Where did this get her? Now she's six feet under in a forest where nobody's ever going to find her. And people think you skip down because you're an asshole. Like look at what desperation and leeching of power can do to you. Now you're dead. 
You were running around in that terrible haircut for a bunch of terrible people and now you're dead. What happened? What happened? You were selling your soul left and right because you wanted to be close to power instead of standing on your own two feet and qualifications, probably she has none, whatever, and running for yourself and now you're dead. It's just kind of sad. It's just kind of sad to me. Again, I have nothing to feel bad for, for Elizabeth Roth. What's her? I don't know her last name. I know her as Elizabeth. It's not Murphy. I don't know why Murphy just came to my head. Whatever her last name would be. Next character is Susan Ross. She's like Wonder Bread. White with colors. She's just, she's just there. I was really personally indifferent to Susan the entire time. The whole time she was coming up, I was like, you know what, maybe one day I'll see it for you. And I gained respect for her when she clocked Melly's plan for choosing her as vice president. That was like immediately the second she got on the show, so I gained respect for her rather quickly. She doesn't let anyone steamroll her. She doesn't take from David Rosen's playbook and let people just steamroll her, and I respect her for that. Everyone was in her damn business, that paternity test, but like, I think she would have lost worse than Melly did. So, like, really, and it's a television show, but like, you couldn't sell me Susan as president. I wasn't buying that. I was like, there's no way this is gonna happen. Like, it's just, it's not giving. It's not giving. Also, literally, Susan could never catch a break. Not only is she vice president, which is a job she had to be talked into. She didn't want to be vice president in the first place. She's vice president to Fitzgerald Grant, who was gallivanting around the place after divorcing Melly, who was like, and now she's flying around with her boyfriend, David Rosen, who was cheating on her with her campaign manager, literally right under her nose. Susan never was allowed to breathe for one second. Two, one second. She literally cannot win and then they try to tell her daughter that her daddy ain't her daddy. Like Susan cannot handle any of that. Like I, I, I'm out of breath Think, Can you not, the state of stress she was in, she didn't even want this job in the first place. Susan did not want this job in the first place. They forced her into it and now look, now she has a lifetime of stress. Her daughter almost got her whole paternity outed. Where do we go from here? Nowhere. She's lucky she's not dead though. She really just disappeared. But I mean, you lost, so you disappear. Susan Roth was never gonna be no damn president. Like really, they were not, I was not buying that. She, she didn't even wanna be vice president. How is she now gonna wanna be president? Next character is David Rosen. I'm hamster face that I have no respect for. I don't think you're supposed to have respect for David Rosen. He doesn't really have respect for himself. Um, I just don't like nice guys. I especially don't have like nice guys that like act like that. So Olivia got you fired once. <laughs> he was a big firing. She made you lose a case once, really big case, but whatever. And then he got off his high horse, blackmailed some people and go out now we're done. They dropped that whole like era rather quickly. It's funny for a show full of people who like to carry a grudge, that was, the whole like David like stealing the card back from them, they kind of got over that pretty quickly. Commendable, commendable. I'm fine with him even though I don't like him. I'm indifferent, I just don't like him, what he stands for. <laughs> what David Rosen stands for, I don't like. I don't like him and Abby together. I thought, she, I think she can do better. And then he started playing these mind games with Susan and Elizabeth and what what is the matter with you David Rosen? See what happens when you give like ugly men anything. What was he doing? The, oh, Susan is the only person who would talk to him at that point. Olivia and him ain't besties no more. Abby has a whole new boyfriend. People have moved on. And now you're terrorizing a single mother? Now you're terrorizing a single mother. David Rosen is a walking terror and he thought he would be vice president and I had to laugh at that because I'm like what have you really done? Every scandal, so how many scandals have happened right under your nose? Are you not the attorney general? Look at how, look at what is happening in DC under your careful eye. I really don't think you should be taught and he really thought he'd be vice president. You're bad at your job. You're bad at the job that you already have. What would make you good enough for vice president? He's so easily manipulated. He has no backbone. What are David's views on anything? What are David's views on anything? He's weak. That's the word I'm looking for. He's weak. 
why do you walk into Cyrus's like house this is at the end of season seven how why do you walk into Cyrus's house knowing you almost just got shot by Jake Ballard and you walk into a house of someone you know does not like you and, and you're the re you're standing in the way of his success and you walk into that person's house one a and b you accept clear liquid from him I just I took this game no you accept clear liquid for someone who has every reason in the world to kill you this man where are your critical thinking skills is he's not a lawyer attorney general where are your critical thinking skills I mean he called himself the United States of America's bitch proudly less than 15 minutes before that scene so it, I said it's a lost cause at this point he don't even know what he's saying. He's been narrowly avoiding death since season one. So I was not shocked when in the finale, he, they, he died. I said, it's about time. <laughs> no, because he has been narrowly escaping death forever. I'm assuming so they could kill him in the last season. My forever mood candle decided to join the party. It's not giving. David's an idiot. He's an idiot and he's weak. That's why you died. Really? First of all, I would say if I had been around and knew of all of Cyrus's um, murderous antics, I would not be accepting liquid from Cyrus at any point in my life. Certainly not in his own house. Certainly not in the dead of night. Certainly not when it's clear. And certainly not when Jake Ballard just told me that everybody wants to kill me because I'm standing in their way. You just narrowly escaped death. Again, again, he nearly escaped death less than 20 minutes before he actually died. And now you left Abby sad. So now I have an issue with that. <laughs> Don't like David Rosen. Next character and last character in my little um, plot movers category is Sally Langston, a crazy ass woman. She's a hoot though. She's a hoot. She's a who. She didn't let Fitz control her. You know, whatever. Fitz was a bad candidate. Like the second time, her like her like sniping his donors was just like politics. That was that wasn't nobody's fault. Fitz should have kept better raps on his people. And I mean, Cyrus had to do it for him to keep her from going. But I'm like, that's not Sally being a bad person. That's her being a good politician, which means you have to be kind of a bad person. So like, what were you expecting, Fitz? Why is Fitz gets so angry about things that he can control, whatever. You could have controlled, you could have kept better wraps on your vice president, but you didn't. Cause what did you want to do? Cheat on your wife? What did you want to do? I don't remember. And then, so Sally was about to win. I believe Sally ran a phenomenal campaign with all of my political science knowledge, which is zero. And beat Olivia Pope. Like she was about to win with Leo Bergen. They were about to win. Ain't that about a, about a bitch. Even after Sally had killed her own husband, everything was fine. That scene, it's not funny what she did, but it was kind of funny what she did. It was just the way Sally killed him. It's her hand motions and her face while she's doing it that I'm just like, what is wrong with you, Sally? What's wrong? Uh, it was just pretty funny, her killing him. The way she did it, she looked like she just went off the rails and I was like, oh, wow. Sally without like a blank stare on her face. That's different. And then now she's a TV show host and Olivia's like, do you want to do this for the rest of your life? And I was agreeing with Olivia, but as the show stayed on, I mean, Sally stayed out of y'all's mess. She wasn't kidnapped. She wasn't held captive by Payas and White Woman and Co. Like, I think she kind of won. And now she still has her television show. And now like all y'all's names are caught up in some B613 mess, kind of. She stayed out of it. She's the one who technically won. And if she would decided to run for president, she has a cleaner campaign than all of you guys do. So it looks like Sally is the true winner. Let Sally Langston beat you. That's a little sad. That's a little sad in my book. So that's my first category of plot movers slash dead people. And now we're gonna move into Olivia's goons. Charlie, like Charlie Brown? 
I thought you were dead. I'm not dead. Okay, next category is Olivia's goons. <laughs> First up is Charlie. I have no opinion on Charlie. I thought I was going to develop an opinion by season seven because he became like a main character for some reason. I don't know what was up with that. But I thought I was going to develop an opinion on him and I did not. I'm very indifferent towards him. Ah, uh, erring on the side of I kind of like him because at least Charlie stands in his shit. He doesn't falter ever. He never plays moral compass like his murderous bestie and fiance. He knows he has nothing to stand on in terms of a moral compass. Like, come on, you were, you were a serial killer for hire. He also doesn't speak out of turn or ever raise his voice. So I'm fine with Charlie. He and Quim, him, him and Quim, it could be worse. It was worse. Her and Huck was worse. So I will leave Charlie alone for right now because at least I don't have to see that. At least I don't have to see that relationship if Quinn is with Charlie. And he's good at his job. Charlie's very good at his job. We could have a con you can have a conversation about whether his job is ethical or not later. Um, I'm not going to. But he always did his job and did his job very well, in my opinion. He killed people who needed to be killed. He tortured people who needed to be tortured. And he shut up. Great employee. Great employee. Good for Quinn. Anything's better than the other guy, so we won. Good job, Charlie. Well, I spoke positive the other man. Whatever. Next character is Harrison. I said justice for James Novak. The justice should come for Harrison right first before we go to James Novak because they both of them, neither of them deserve the ending that they actually got. Why did he have to die like that? Here's my thing though, that actually maybe Harrison doesn't need as much justice because at least he got a funeral and shit. I appreciate Shonda making it clear what characters are important and what characters are not because Elizabeth, Elizabeth's funky ass didn't get a funeral as she shouldn't. So now we know Harrison is more important because like she doesn't always do that. Shonda sometimes will leave characters out to dry. So I'm like, okay, fine. Harrison matters. Harrison is, I'm fine with Harrison. He really did owe his life to Olivia. That's why he was up her ass so bad. But it was still like, you don't have any opinion of your own. That's different at all. That's weird. But now that I say that, he was trying to stop Quinn from being nosy. Like Quinn was trying to be like, why do you guys just follow everything Olivia says, blah, 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 blah. And he just wanted, like imagine Quinn bothering you like that for that long. I would tell her anything to shut up too. So I don't blame him, but I also actually think he believed what he said, where he was like, I'd be writing for live until death. And like, that's what happened. And then they replaced you like a season later. See, <laughs> that's where, that's where I'm like, mm, maybe not. Maybe not, Shonda. Maybe we didn't like his character because that was crazy. Now his replacement, Marcus. He's not his replacement. Like in terms of like, you know, you know what I'm talking about, like his replacement, whatever. So Marcus is, okay, first I need to discuss this because they never discussed this. Olivia never hit back at him with this. So I'm going to. You're obsessed with white women, Marcus. D you have an obsession with white women. And look where that got you. The only reason I'm bringing this up is because he was trying to drag Olivia. Do you not remember that scene in, in, in the middle of the street? He was trying to call Olivia out of her name in the middle of the street. And look at what happened. And then he and he was trying to call her out of her name for like liking Fitz, like being in love with with Fitz, obviously. And I'm like, hmm, with your back closet, I think you would have stayed silent. You had to call Olivia because the white wife, the white mayor's wife, you were fucking got killed in front of you. You didn't do shit and had the nerve to come for Olivia's personal life. I don't get it. Like Olivia has issues and we're going to get to those, but you have issues too. And now you're working for a Republican, the same Republican Olivia fell in love with. So are you, I'm saying you're no better. I'm saying you coming for her in the middle of the street, in the middle of a square was unjustified because she didn't call, she didn't ever, she didn't ever bring this back up. And she, Olivia is better than me because I would have. I would have. Well, you were trying to call me out of my name and look at everyone you have dated since then. Interesting to me. Mayor's wife to Melly Grant. 
I would have brought it back up, but Olivia didn't feel a need to, and I, and I commend her for, you know, patience and virtues and all sort of that. So then they made fun of him for being like Harrison's replacement, like kind of, it was kind of like a joke, which he was, no doubt, but they kind of, not kind of, they pretty much gave up on Marcus as a character of his own that we wanted to, that we were going to learn anything about, like half a season in. Maybe the, the closest thing he got to any sort of development or personal plot line was him being in love with Melly of all people. And then because Melly doesn't deserve love for some reason, according to this show, we're getting there, that stopped. Kind of. It's back on now, but it stopped for the entirety of the show. It starts back up again as soon as the show ends. Whatever. Marcus is a plot device wasted away to work with Fitz. And to serve as like now not like now not because of the finale but like and this just walk with me and to serve as scandals like socially conscious bait it's weird there's a lot of issues with season seven um but that's one of the biggest to me i don't y'all know y'all didn't do this for six seasons or like five um now all of a sudden it's different i don't like that i don't keep it just do what you were doing before i don't like this using Marcus is that he literally like we don't know anything about Marcus at all nothing at all we know nothing about him at all we kind of know stuff about her other goons but we know nothing about Marcus at all and I'm like I think that was on purpose he was kind of just there like everyone else I'm moving your plot I get nothing though fun next <sighs> Next character is Huck. He's pretty boring to me. I'm sorry. Um, keeps falling for tricks, keeps falling for a sob story. It's really, really just sad. Every time. How many times did he fall for someone's sob story and they tricked him and almost killed him? Like, really, Huck? Orange will be the best assassin here? That's so sad. Um, his He's been through a lot. I guess or whatever his family that was sad that was a little bit sad and it's even sadder because b613 ended up like just getting exposed anyway so he didn't need to go through any of that at all with his family actually at all which is even sadder but you know I'm just pretty indifferent towards Huck I feel like most people are because like what do you love or what do you hate about him I'm not seeing anything that she would love or hate about him that's just me personally. Decent character. Then lastly, the last one of Olivia's old goons is Quinn. I have issues with Quinn. I think she's a weirdo. I think Quinn is so weird. Like fundamentally, I think she's strange. Like they just, all of my issues go back to her just being a fucking weirdo. Season one, I was like, you're a little off. Something is not clean in your bath water. And then look what happened. Her whole background came out and I was like, see, I knew she was hiding something. Cause she was just like, all, I always just like stressed out. And I'm like, what are you hiding sister? This is where things get weird because all that happens to you and she develops an obsession with murder. And I have to, you know, stare at you a little bit weirdly because of that. It's so weird because Huck won't let her be his apprentice for good reason because I don't know why you want a murderous hobby. And then she gets all pissy and decides the genius that Quinn is decides to go to Charlie doesn't know don't know she don't know this guy you barely know Huck you barely know Huck and so you really don't know Charlie to feed her murderous kink and then gets trapped in B613 because she wanted to play dumb really Quinn do you see she's a weirdo she's because she wanted to play assassin she wanted to play assassin now she's caught up in a super secret government spy organization she they own her now because you wanted to play a you wanted to sit with the big dogs you just got acquitted barely off of the backs of your teeth and you want to get right back into murder for hire interesting she's a weirdo she's weird she's weird like that pipe it was really quick that pipeline between acquittal and full backdoor assassin was relatively quick Qu and then so as I'm now in season seven I like Quinn 
barely. She was pretty much in the in the red the whole time and then now she just barely gotten herself back up into the green. But here is my issue. Quinn playing moral compass. Stop. Quinn playing moral compass with Olivia. Stop. 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 What moral ground do you have to stand on? None. 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 She was one of the only ones who like called out Olivia for her shit though. I mean in the end they ended up being fine again, but she was the only one who really like stuck it to Olivia. And I was like, thank you. Cause no one else is doing it in this show. And I'll talk about that like later. By season seven, enough of bad things happened to Quinn to where I was like, I don't need to run an active hate campaign against her anymore. I'm now officially indifferent. And now by the end of the show, I like her now. Olivia was acting bizarre. So it was worth her reaction. Like it was worth Quinn trying to play moral compass, but her act, it was just hilarious hilarious hearing her actually try to stand above Olivia Pope morally. Quinn Perkins, not your real name. That was just really funny to me because I was like, mm. Mm. pot calling the kettle black? That's weird. That's weird. But she was the only person who was now she is eh, a little bit. She was the only person at any time who like really questioned Olivia like really like put 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 that arm to her neck Abby did a little bit but Quinn went there and Olivia needed that because Olivia was off a rocker like at a certain point so those are Olivia and Olivia's goons Quinn's goons her team her team of fun people who never get caught None of them ended up in jail. Charlie, jail season seven. Surprise it took that long. Surprise it took that long. And it was weird. I was like, is he actually going to prison? I was like, is he actually, when the FBI came in, is he actually going to prison? Cause y'all have managed to evade prison, accountability, electric chairs for years. So when Charlie, when they came in and arrested, I said, wow, how did that happen? How did that happen? So those are Olivia's um, crew. How many times have I told you you have to be what? You have to be what? Twice. What? Twice as good. Twice as good as them to get half of what they have. Next category of people are just criminals. I'm not calling Olivia's group criminals. They know they're criminals. Th these three, first up, Payas and White Lady. Still don't know her name. I am so sorry. I have no idea what her name is. Whatever. Weirdos and Big Bozos because it didn't work. How did you let everyone win? Y'all were big and bold, cleaning bones, killing people surrounded by dinosaur bones, trying to be tough and play tough and look what happened. Literally nothing. I honestly think these two were really weak villains for me, like to be perfectly honest. I don't think they were scary. I don't think they were scary. I did, they didn't even feel, they didn't feel serious in their threats. Even though they were, they were serious in their threats. They followed through and killed people, but they weren't all that. And I'm right because it didn't work. Nothing worked. And then that woman's voice just bothers me. The way she speaks, the way she sounds bothers me beyond my wildest dreams. I hate listening to her talk. So that might play a reason as to why I don't like these two characters. But I was they're just weak villains. They weren't, I'm like, after Eli Pope for like back and forth for a couple of seasons, you need to come correct if you're going to be the new villain. And neither of them did. I know they were hired by Luna Vargas, but she, whatever. She's dead now too. I gotta talk about her in the dead category. Whatever. She's a whatever character. She didn't even speak. Just wanted to kill her husband because Cyrus told her to. Really? Y'all don't have a one, one thought of your own? Really? That's scary. <laughs> That's really scary. You were going to be vice president. Whatever. Next character. Next character is Jake Ballard. I don't know what exactly I'm supposed to like or dislike about him because he's basically a shell of a human being. Jake Ballard is nothing. We barely know him. 
who he is like actually in the grand scheme of things we know maybe enough to write like a small introduction paragraph about Jake Ballard but we don't we can't you can't write a whole essay on him because we don't know anything about him even still he's he's always somebody's bitch and I'm just like really Jake he just does what other people tell him to do and like to each their own but do you have any values at all do you even form them anymore or do you just do what people tell you to do I think it's the second I think like do you does he even form opinions does he have opinions anymore no that's why you're in prison now Jake everyone else everyone else got off scot-free but because you wanted to get a little bit too tough Cyrus joining Cyrus's team woof too big for your britches and now you're the only one in prison I don't think Jake Ballard is happy I don't think he's content with himself I don't even know if he could ever be happy honestly how he's been living but he's certainly not happy now and he wasn't happy then the only point where he was content was on that island with Olivia but I'm like I don't want Olivia around you either I don't like Fitz I'll get to him in a second but I don't want Olivia around Jake either he's fine don't want no no Jake has no core it's almost like he has no soul who is Jake Ballard do you know who Jake Ballard is because I don't does Olivia know who Jake Ballard is I would bet she does not So I don't have an opinion on Jake Ballard because what would I have an opinion on? He's been like a soldier for hire for years. And then he was command for a bit a stint. He did an okay job, clearly not that well because he got taken over, like taken down. So, mm -hmm. but what am I? But what are my opinions supposed to be on Jake Ballard if I don't have any? If you don't have anything to stand on? Worse, he's worse than David Rosen in that. Because David at least used to be like, I'm wearing the white hat. Jake is just like, I do whatever people tell me to do. That's sad. That's just, that's terrible, Your Honor. And then the final character in the criminal category is Eli Pope, the king of the monologue, or Rowan, whatever you want to call him, the king of the monologue. I respected, I like Eli Pope as villain. I love him as villain. Um, not the last time that he was villain. It was just weird. Oh, he was also kind of desperado and desperate. I respected Eli Pope up until the give me back my bones moment with Olivia in season seven because I was like, pull yourself together. Bones? Why are you crying over bones? I know he has an emotional happen to the bones because of the woman he had to shoot and kill, but you used to be command pull yourself together I didn't like that he sounded like usually Eli Pope sounds calm and collected even when he he was panicking and so I said what's this you're not supposed to be panicked what's this no didn't like that I, that's when I lost a little bit of respect for him but have I gained it back now so I think what was happened in the finale how he like went and like told all b613 and blamed it all on Jake was supposed to make me like like him again and I'm like no no you've evaded responsibility for this whole thing yet again so I don't really know what you want me to say to you I do think it was I do think Eli Pope is funny in how he's able to like be in charge of whatever room he's able to go whatever room he goes into like he went into that setting committee and was like i'm in charge now and they all said okay and they all took everything he said as word and i was like wow love eli pope that's what i was talking about i think he's batshit crazy though like he's not right in the head he lied to olivia her entire life he was sitting on that couch in that house snot nose crying over his wife dying in a plane crash that he ordered someone to do while he kept his wife in a prison he was snot nose crying to olivia he's not right in the head that is crazy to me him and olivia have the same arrogant stubbornness kind of some of the same thing they're so stubborn that it becomes reckless and arrogant that's why it's so 
annoying to root for Olivia sometimes. I'm not rooting for Eli at all. I can't be bothered to root for most of the men in the show, like at all. They're, most of the men in the show all are complete lost causes and he is literally no exception to this rule. Like Eli's not, whatever, he needs to go. He needed to be not command anymore at a point because hello, for the Republic, this is where Eli had, I, this is no. For the Republic, what's the, what's the, what's the Republic? This is what all this is for? No. You like the power and you want to drown in it. Just say that. To protect a figment of imagination, a republic, a country that you single-handedly control, no, you want the power. He's just pathetic though. When Paeus and Co. had him on their leash, he was just lashing out and running around like a chicken with its head cut off. He was spiraling and I said, Eli, get yourself together. You don't let these white people steamroll you? No. Killed his only person to ever love though, because of them. Now look at you, that, I know he regrets that. They would have killed her anyway though. So it was a lost cause. But Eli Pope, that's when I was like, what's going on here? Because you've been like the Titan, the Titan villain this whole time. And now you're wavering at a white woman who can't even walk in heels? No. I was just thrown because I was like, this is not Eli Pope. This is certainly not Eli Pope, but it was, which is why I had to leave. Okay, so my camera decided to give out when I was talking about Maya Pope for some unbeknownst reason to me, but next character in the criminals category is Maya Pope. I have no issue with Maya Pope. She has never once claimed to be what she was not. Anytime anyone fell like victim to one of her schemes, it was their fault. I can't blame a strong, hardworking mother. Like... That's nobody's fault except your own. It is Eli Pope's fault that he got caught up in that mess. You formed B613 because you were mad that Maya Pope like schemed you. Like that's really what happened. If you really wanna to talk about it, it's not her fault. Maya's a good woman. They, they keep her alive, creating more problems for themselves. If they really wanted to like fix their problems, they would have killed her back when they first realized the first scheme was her. But no, they wanted to keep her alive. That's their own fault. That's your guys' fault. Everything that happened after, I can't tell you nothing. Those are my thoughts on Maya Pope. All the mistakes you've made. Your mistake? Was thinking you could take what's mine and should you make that mistake again, remember this. You can't take Olivia Pope. Hope takes you. The last category, big category, is I'm calling it the Oval. Anyone who's ever come close to the Oval Office. So the first person, first person who was sitting front and center, I'm talking about is Fitzgerald Grant the third, right? First, Fitz shows no interest in being president ever ever not once did he show any interest in ever doing his job he has to be screamed at like a toddler to do his job he has gray hair he's so mopey he's so mopey all the time his mouth is always a gap and he's always staring at somebody do i need to snap in your face you need to pay attention are you not the president of a country why are you acting like a to fitz is a toddler he's an overgrown toddler it gives nothing He's either mopey or grumpy because a woman had the audacity to have control over her own body and her own life. That's what he always is doing. He's never actually doing his job though. I question if Fitz ever went to work because how did Andrew and Liz and all of your secret service plan an entire coup against you and you don't notice? Your entire half your staff turned against you and you don't notice? Your vice president is leading a coup against you and you don't notice? You don't pay attention? Look how many things happened when he was just sitting there pouting. while he was sitting there pouting over something or another. I can't respect nobody like that. Can, I can. Fitz and Melly is my first category. Fitz treated Melly like a piece of shit on the side of the road. So like even worse so than that. You find out that she got raped by your father and doesn't extend any 
sympathy beyond like half a day. That's weird to me. Let's discuss. So Fitz ran out. Melly went on national TV and admitted to this or like the fictional blood sucking country that hates women that she had an affair with you. You ran her, she felt safer doing that than staying in your house with you. You ran her out of her own house because you're a suffocating bozo. You treated her so badly, she had to escape. She thought it would be better if the whole world knew about y'all's affair than to remain in that emotional prison by herself, knowing how it could backfire on her. Not Melly the little, she wasn't, she wasn't thinking too much, but I'm talking about Fitz right now. I'm talking about Fitz right now. That's what you did to her. That's what you did to her. You ruined her. You ruined her. Fitz was about to bring Teddy into the, he was about to like, take Teddy from Melly into a room with a woman who was fucking around with, which is fine, not checking with Melly. He was going to literally just bring Teddy into the room without checking with the mother of his child. The mother of his child. Had Melly not walked in and seen them, he would have done it without her permission. Their toddler, Teddy, their toddler. That's how you, tr that's how you respect Melly. And then whenever he would play Melly, uh, moral police, my bad, over Melly, it was a trip because I was like, okay, so, Melly got those people on the bus blown up. She did. Didn't you kill an elderly like Supreme Court justice in her hospital bed? Did I imagine that? No. Melly has blood on her hands. Did you not shoot down a commercial plane? I don't know. <laughs> like maybe I watched a different show because I don't like when Fitz speaks, especially not <laughs> trying to hold authority over somebody else. I mean, he's the president, but it's a show, calm down. Then, so you would think it would um, get better with the person that he actually loved, which is Olivia. Um, no, so Fitz and Olivia. Here's my thing though, before I start. I believe that Fitz does love Olivia and he loved her the entire time, all seven seasons of the entire show, unlike Derek Shepard and Meredith. Yeah, that's my belief. Um, Fitz loved her the entire time. I think Derek did fall out of love with Meredith before he kicked rocks. That was my belief. You can disagree. My camera just like crunched. That was scary. So when Olivia and him would ever break up, um, first period of time. He would stalk her for safety, but then sit with pictures of her and her new man, whoever it might be, scowling and pissed and for what? While Melly is six months pregnant in the other room. I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't understand this. I could have that timeline completely off, but like, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the principle of the matter. Now, do you want to own Olivia? Cause it gives that you want to own Olivia. Don't like that. When, whenever, now when Fitz, Fitz, first of all, this is the first of all, demanded that Olivia move in nearly without talking to her. Just had her stuff moved here. He didn't ask for her opinion, literally once. Just assume that she would want to move in with him into the White House without once thinking of what it would mean for her. First of all, you don't ask somebody before you ask them if you want to move in with them, you just move them in with you and you live in the White House. That's even more bizarre. But if, even if he was a regular person, that would still be bizarre. Without the consequence of what might happen to her, does Fitz remember he's a Republican or not? When talking about moving in with Olivia, do y'all know what party y'all are in? Even if you weren't in that party, even if you were a Democrat, it would still kind of be the same reaction. Are you kidding me? You see the way your own wife talks about Olivia. You see the way Cyrus speaks about Olivia. You hear the way you speak about Olivia and you... But this also, he actually believed Olivia's whole like made up lie when they were like, um, wanted to break the news of them like dating the first time that she was like, oh, if, um, Fitz was the one who said this, he was like, if I did Olivia to open up comedies about race and dating in the Republican party, because Olivia fed him that line, that lie of a line, that lie of a line, absolute literal hooey and horseshit of a line. Is that why you're forgetting? Because no, that was not going to work. I mean, he did move her in. 
but it wasn't working. Not to mention, she never even said yes. She literally, Olivia never once said yes. If it's never even asked her a question, you're literally suffocating her. You suffocate every woman you've ever been with. Isn't that interesting? Both women you've been with have had to literally escape you and your house as a prison. You might be the problem. It might actually not be Melly. Melly might have not ruined your life. It might have been all on your own. That's fun. Did Olivia even want to be first lady, really? She seemed kind of fine. I mean, with my expertise on Olivia Pope, she seemed kind of fine waiting until the term was over, but Fitz is smothering. And did he like, think it through what would have happened if he had made Olivia like the first lady in this country? No. They're like assumed back together now. I'm actually fine with that. Mm. In a perfect world, Olivia would be dating neither, neither of these two men. In a perfect world, um, she would not have encountered neither ooh, Fitz nor Jake. But it's now assumed that they're back together and I'm fine with it. I'm actually fine with it. I don't like Fitz, no I don't, um, but Olivia's made her choice and I think she'll be decently happy. I said all these horrifying things. The relationship is horrifying, but they might be happy together. She's certainly not gonna date Jake, Supermax prison in Illinois, she's not dating him. Was she ever dating him? No, no. On that island, kind of, but no, no. He was, as when Cyrus read him for filth, you are the second choice, Jake. Second banana. Silver. The alternate. That's what that was. So I'm fine that she's with like, ending up with Fitz now. I'm actually like, I've come to terms with that after watching the finale. I'm like, you know what? I'll leave that alone because maybe Olivia will like smile and be happy. And then to end Fitz's whole like season seven arc, spare me. Spare me the Fitz goes woke with Brandon Park or whoever, like, please. That was so, uh, that was, I was, that was terrible to watch. That was terrible to watch. I did not have a very fun time at all with that. Please spare me that. Fitz is like championing the black cause now. Huh? I didn't like that. <laughs> no, no. Next character. Huh, let me take my water actually. Next character is Cyrus, a nut. Cyrus is a nut. I kind of like it though. Cyrus <coughs> is good at what he does. He's good at, I'll give him that, he's good at what he does. He has some of my favorite monologues ever. It's the way his face, he, his whole face gets into the monologue. Like it, 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 like his whole, his wrinkles like churn as he's speaking. It's so like captivating, but he's usually saying some nut ass shit cause Cyrus is a nut. One, so happy that um, Cyrus had Michael. Michael takes care of Ella because Cyrus doesn't care about his child. Cyrus never said her name post season three, his child. And then Michael leaving him and he came back, leaving him. Yeah, that's someone who actually might like that kid. And they're fine now, I guess, but no. Are they fine now? They've not talked about Michael in like seasons, whatever. I hope um, Ella's away from her, Ella away from him, away from Cyrus. You don't say your daughter's name past season three? No, that's why, I'm, but Cyrus was never meant to be like a good person, I don't think. Like we're not, I'm not meant to see him, we're not meant to see him as a good person, we're meant to see him as Cyrus, big bad wolf. Cyrus is smart, but he loves his power and he's very power hungry. So then he gets that power and then he becomes power drunk and loses it because he goes too far. Cyrus to prison when he went to prison, um, he deserved every look of that. He deserved every punch that he got. Like that's what you happen. That's what happens when you're a boneless serial killer. Like that's what happens. Um, speaking of boneless serial killer, Tom, pff, 
<laughs> I'm sorry, this is kind of funny. Tom ended up dead. He got out of a supermax prison just to die. He got out of a supermax prison that he went in because he wanted to set up Cyrus just to die. That's crazy. That's terrible, actually. That's terrible. When, I, when he died, I said, he's dead? Tom is the only one who was evading death this whole time. And I said, really? He just gonna, he got out of a supermax prison just to die? That's, that's nutty. That's nutty to me. But back to my point. I think Cyrus, how Cyrus is the final villain, I was intrigued because the whole, like, season six, Cyrus was kind of not doing well. And in some part of season seven as well, he was not doing well. So when it was revealed that he was, like, behind it all, I was like, when did you plan this? Did he plan this in jail or was this just like an off the top of his head sort of moment? Because he had backup plans as well. It was smart. It was smart, which is why I will commend Cyrus for what he does. I think Cyrus is interesting. I would never speak to him, but I think he's an interesting person. He is not misunderstood. He just wants power. He's just, well, he's not like, that's not a misunderstanding. He just wants power and will do anything to get that power. And I'm fine with it as a character in a television show. Makes for excellent TV. Makes for excellent TV. Hmm. Cyrus is the reason a lot of this shit happened, so. Hmm, maybe I do like him. I like Cyrus. That's my final statement. I do like Cyrus. Narrowly escaped death and prison. Not really. He was in jail. Never mind. So that's Cyrus. I'm fine with Cyrus. Hmm. I'm literally coming to terms with it right now if I like Cyrus or not. I do. Enough because of what he does for the show. Because of what he does for the show. Bad person. But for what he does for the show, I like Cyrus. Next character. Hmm. Next character is Abby. I love Abby. I think she's my favorite character. I don't even know if I have a favorite character on this show in particular because they all are kind of a disaster but if I had to pick one she would be one of my favorite characters on the show. I hate her with David simply because I think David is pathetic um like just pathetic. I didn't think it'd get any worse and then started dating Leo Bergen and it was bad it was worse. Um he ended up being fine Leo Bergen like in a relationship with her. I just am just like is there no one better in DC for Abby to date? because I'm not seeing she's dating down don't like that don't like that didn't like that at all so Abby is always fighting with Olivia for some unbeknownst reason to me Olivia is a bad friend to Abby especially when she was like running Melly's whole campaign when Olivia was like oh you can come back to work with me it'll be fun after like Abby's pouring her heart out about losing her job and Olivia's like I'm your security blanket it's just like that's not that's not the time that wasn't the time to say that in that way but Olivia didn't even realize it because she thought she was comforting Abby but she wasn't Abby's a big dog too <laughs> like you and Abby had the same training and then I mean your name was on the door and you trained them all but you trained them all to be big dogs so my thing is though, Abby did react a little. She was doing a lot. Abby did a lot to this, to, to reacting to this conversation. She did a lot, but she was kind of justified in how she reacted because Livy was talking down to her, but like, okay, it's reversed. Okay, I don't really care. I don't really care. It's usually, it's usually the other way around. So I, I don't really care. Then this is my thing though. Olivia had me on Abby's side and therefore Fitz's side, which I hated when they were on that fight on the airplane tarmac. I don't like being on Fitz's side, but I was in that point. Olivia really, this is, she's not what I'm talking about right now, but she didn't have to do any of that. She just wanted to win. Just how Abby wanted to win. They all just wanted to win. That's why I'm like, you guys are one and the same. Why are you fighting? Melly could have gotten on the, off that plane, couldn't have gotten off that plane the second Olivia realized what, what um, they were doing. Melly could have gotten off the plane and gotten on a different plane at a different airport or something different. Like, like I know Quinn was looking harder, but look, let's look harder. There's definitely a private plane that could have flown you to fucking Florida. You didn't need to have that um, cat, you didn't, have that, you didn't have that fight on an airport tarmac, really? No. 
that was unnecessary. Both of them were wrong in that, but Olivia a little bit, I'm gonna give her a little bit more because you could have just left. You guys have just left. But Abby never actually cut deep. And I respect her for that, but that would not have been my personal choice. My personal choice would have been to hit back harder. Olivia literally blamed you for her killing a man. Not, no, no. Not in this household. Not in this household would that have flown in any sort of feat of the imagination. Olivia literally, so Olivia killing Andrew made me smile larger than I ever had before in my life. But then she says to Abby, don't ever cross me again. Like Abby is the reason that you had to kill him. You didn't need to kill him. I'm happy you did. But Abby is better than me because I would have had some choice words for her. I would have brought up her soldier murdering machine of a dad and let her hear it. Maybe I'm a bad person, but no, 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 no. Why is she blaming you for her committing murder? And you just took that. You just took it and like became besties again. I'm fine with the besties happening again, but we should have had a conversation about that. She also could, she had multiple opportunities to throw Olivia to the wolves and she never did. She could have thrown Olivia to the wolves when Susan and Melly were showing dirt to each other, but she didn't. She hid it to protect her, but Olivia is out there blaming Abby for her literally murdering an entire human being. Who was more invested in this friendship? Ah, uh, mm, 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 mm. Olivia's a bad friend to her. A little bit, they're all, everything's all fine and dandy now. When you watch the whole show, I'm like, hmm. But what she, would she look like Olivia to be the best friend? I would not. I would not. So maybe Abby like knew what she was getting herself into. Now, uh, because I know someone's gonna bring this up, they're gonna be like, didn't Abby get like huck, like shot and almost killed? That she did. And I don't have much else to say about that. She did do that. She did get him shot and almost killed. Life goes on. <laughs> Life goes on. All right, all right. Mm, my sister was down bad, fiending for Quinn's approval in season seven. Quinn's approval, was it season six? Quinn's approval, it was season six. Cause Quinn was all pissy at her. Cause she fucked up her, she did. But you need Quinn's approval to live your life. You need Quinn to like you. That's not a need, Abby. Back it up. You don't need friends that bad. <laughs> you don't need friends that bad. She kind of does, because she has no other friends. But I'm making a point, all right? Next character. The big dogs now. Next character is Melly Grant. At this point, I am... I like Melly. If you'd asked me that the first time I watched Scandal, I would have slapped you across the face. Let's first start with First Lady Melly. Melly is very, very aggravating. Melly is snarky. She white woman's like nobody else, but it's kind of entertaining to watch. It's like, what will she do next? What will Melly do next? She's done so much already. Like we started out with election fraud. It could only go up from there, right? I wanted to root for her. My relationship with Melly Grant is that I want to root for her and then she does something else that reminds me like who she is and I'm like, never mind. I don't want to root for her anymore. And then she lays low for a while or then she gets hurt so badly that I'm like, damn, the whole world is preying on your downfall. You are down terrible. So I'm like, I'll extend grace to her. It's hard to root for Melly because she is so just like that and especially when we're like that to Olivia I'm gonna need you to step back but when it's with Fitz I'm cheering you on I'm cheering you on when it's with Olivia I'm like watch your tone who are you speaking to that's that's what has to happen with me like at that Republican National Convention or whatever that was when they were like Melly was the chosen one to be the president or whatever. When she was like, cleared him and was like, this is my convention, not yours. Talk about me and my awesomeness. I was like, yeah. Talk about Melly and her awesomeness, Fitz. In Melly versus Fitz, I'm on Melly. <laughs> like, come on. Did Melly want to be president? 
to prove somebody wrong or did she want to be president? I think she, she, I do believe Melly actually wanted to be president eventually. I just think she did it that soon after leaving the White House to prove someone wrong. Also to jump on like her popularity, but also I think she did that soon to prove Fitz wrong. And I don't really see an issue with that. Like it got you there. You're the president now. I don't really see an issue with her like wanting to be president to prove something to Fitz. Fitz treated, do you, do you, do, 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 do. Not only did Fitz treat her like trash, this show, her character went through just too much. Too much. So I'm like, whatever. If you need your fire to be set by somebody else, maybe you have some inner things you need to work on in yourself, Melly, but at least it kind of worked. I mean, people had to die left and right, but you're, you're in the Oval Office now. So I guess we're all fine, right? Melly is president. That's when I stopped watching this show the first time. I did not watch any of season seven because I was like, I never want to see Melly as president. I did not, I don't, I didn't like Melly. No, I can't. I couldn't be bothered to. Like, I stopped watching the show. I did not watch season seven at all because I was like, I don't want to see her be president. And now that I've watched it, I'm like, it was an okay season. It really wasn't that bad. But the reason why now I feel differently towards Melly after like watching the whole, watching season seven, how the show treated Melly is beyond me. Not only did Fitz treat Melly like garbage, the whole show did. Why doesn't Melly get love ever? How does how is Fitz happy pretty much the entire show except a few episodes here or there, and a kidnapping? But anything related to love with Melly ends in a bomb, literally, a literal bomb. Fitz stopped loving her before they even signed up to run for president. So like that was a lost cause from the beginning. Cause like Melly had to like jump through hoops for him as first lady lying about conceiving children, rigging elections, all to keep the oversized toddler happy and not cranky. That's one. Andrew, well, he tried to stage a coup and overthrow her husband. But before that, he rejected Melly in the White House after getting caught fornicating in the room next to her entire family. Like everything that went wrong in that situation did, and now he's dead. Third, Kate, Marcus was her next one. Well, Olivia said we can't have that, and she was correct. They couldn't have that. And so she gave him the press secretary job and put a little Bloop, and Melly's here. He was using you for your fame and power. Then, thought, what number are we at? One, two, three, four. The president of Bashrani, Olivia said, well, no, and then blew him up. And then blew him up. So what now? And then, this is what made me mad about this show. I need to talk to the, I need to talk to you guys. And then she's holding hand, are you kidding me? She's holding hands with Jake Ballard, of all people, in the Oval Office. Are you kidding me? I am so, I was, I was, I would watch that scene and I was like, do not make them a thing. They did not make them a thing, thank God. But I just think the very fact that she had to hold Jake Ballard. So Melly got nothing. No, Fitz, no. Andrew, no. Marcus, no. Kind of now. President Bashrani, no. Jake Ballard. That's the last bone you threw at Melly before ending the show. Are you kidding me? laying on the floor, him invading her space and then touching her hand. I had to really sit back and say, no, that was not right. That the show, the show treats her like the villain. There is no question, who gets j just dog shitting on? Melly Graham. The show definitely treats her like the villain. How does she get no love? No love. No love. Melly gets no love. The whole show. No love. And even in, in the Andrew section, Fitz took it away and said no. You get to be vice, it's either Melly, Olivia said. You get to either be vice president or, or Melly. And he chose the vice president because he's a dick. Melly can't have anything. Her husband gets to have everything, gets to be president and have be happy. She gets nothing. And even more of nothing because the whole country hates her for airing out the affair where her husband cheated on television. 
And then you have her holding hands with Jake Ballard in the Oval Office. And I'm supposed to be okay with that. Can't. 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 That's not right. So Melly is a villain. Melly is a villain in a small battle, but not the whole war. She's not the villain of the show. She's not a worse person than Fitz. She's not. She has been done wrong, but she's still like, ugh. Melly is still like, I don't like Melly. I do, but I don't. Because I'm like, she says slick shit a lot. When I watched this the first time, I absolutely despised Melly. And I still do believe, like, I still don't like her. But when I started rewatching, like, the over a couple of times, I paid closer attention. It forces you to pay closer attention to the way Fitz treats Melly in every single conversation. In every, especially in those earlier seasons, he's hated her the whole time. And then it makes, as I rewatch it like twice, I'm like, how the show treats her made me kind of like, I haven't changed my mind. Melly was still not someone I want to hang out with in my spare time, but I'm like, she's been done wrong. Like Fitz doesn't love her, let alone respect her. And he simultaneously blames her for all of his problems. He is in love with somebody else and is still blaming Melly for all of his problems. And this is after Melly gave up her entire career for Fitz. He couldn't even connect the dots about his Demogorgon daddy. He couldn't even connect the dots about why his Melly wouldn't let him touch her. Why Melly wouldn't want to be in the same room as his dad. He couldn't even connect those thoughts for his wife. He couldn't even extend, that's my thing though. Even if you didn't know what happened to her, he still didn't want to extend empathy for his, to his wife, to his wife for no reason. He didn't know what was wrong with her. He didn't seek out to find out what was wrong with her, but still wouldn't extend her empathy for no reason. The woman he's married to, not a good man. <laughs> no. Last character. Oh, sorry. I'm putting, I put on so much lip gloss. Last character is the one, the only, the great Miss Olivia Pope. I like Olivia. I have to root for her. I don't jump through hoops to root for Olivia though. I will do that for other characters and like other like shows and stuff. I am not willing to jump through hoops to root for her i'll just like i just won't jump to the hoop i'll just be like i'm just rooting for her i know she's doing bad and terrible things but i'm just rooting for her just because she's olivia pope that's my summary on that she's such a republican <laughs> she'd be standing these presidents down and i'm like sister she works for anybody she'd be working for any and everybody i have to question her like you're pretty much being called like a monkey whore by like everyone around you all the time. Like that's, that's crazy. Your life is crazy, Olivia. But back to my point. So we have different chapters of Olivia's life. First is like OG white hat Olivia. I love successful smart women. I love her job, her job being a fixture. She's really good at her job. She has a bunch of goons that with her at all time that like, She's really weird about that family shit, considering all the bullshit in hers. Um, you have to like kiss the floor but she walks on, but she actually never said you had to do that. They all just kind of did that. Harrison did that because he wanted to. Harrison kissed her ass because he wanted to. He didn't need to do all that. Quinn never did all that and she was there the whole time. She was running her own mini B613. Let's not be obtuse here. I hated when she did that with her dad. I'm like, you're running your own variation of this. You know that, right? Aw, aw, so sad. Here's my thing. First horrifying thing she did of many. Framing David for domestic abuse to get him away from Abby, therefore traumatizing Abby in the process. I didn't forget that. A lot of people did. I didn't forget that because that had me really confused. At least Abby and David know now, but that's still, still not good. She kept Quinn in the dark about what she did to her until Quinn literally forced it out of her. But like, she needed to keep Quinn in the dark. I, 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 she's fine for that. Telling the world you're Fitz's mistress was a choice. Um, a bad one, in my opinion. Why would you do that? Olivia's Olivia Pope though, so that makes sense why she did that, but I'm like, really? No, not for me. You wonder why you're always stressed out. 
in front of your buildings. I, yes, I was the president's mistress. No, not for me. Her trying to act like she didn't want to come back um, after Harrison dying slash she went to that island was ridiculous. You have literal puppies in your office, like at home. You're gonna let Puck go buck wild? Really? She had me agreeing with Quinn of all people. She had, Olivia had me agreeing with Quinn of all people. Quinn being like, you have a responsibility back at home. She does, yeah, she does. I don't know. I wouldn't keep former. Huck is really fucked up in the head. I wouldn't have taken that man under my wing if I didn't, um, you know, care about him or want to come back to at least see him, right? It's not her job to be his mother, first of all, but like abandonment wouldn't have gone that path would not have gone the path of abandonment as my first choice, all right? Then second chapter is kidnapped, Olivia. I have no comment on this whole situation. Um, kidnapping, I don't think that was a good plot point, but Fitz went to war for it. He went to war for it. Nobody thought he could do it or would do it, and he did, he went to war for it. See, Fitz like loves her. Like, I did, like he loved her the entire time. The entire time. I don't like him, but he did love her. He meant to go to war for it. Good for you, Fitz. Then we have post-kidnapped Olivia. Um, President's girlfriend Olivia was the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life, but that is fully to blame on Fitz. He was literally smothering her. My sister was running around finding cookie recipes for white people. Like she, I would have lost it then. She was walking a very thin line of like, is she okay, is she not? And then like jumped off full steam ahead when she killed Andrew. But like, she got the Hennessy, like I'm so happy she did that. I'm so happy she did that because he needed to die like painfully. Oh, I was so happy when she did that. And we kind of move into like Melly's Chief of Snap, Staff, Snap? Really, Amanda? Melly's Chief of Staff, Olivia. Olivia went off the rails to, for Melly to be president. For Melly to be president of all people. That's also why I'm like, you were, you just work for anybody, do you? Melly to be president? We're losing morals for Melly. Like y'all wanted to you sh Olivia, not y'all. Olivia wanted to leak the beans ab about the fraternity of Susan Ross's kid. Somebody who don't do Susan don't do nothing to nobody. Her child certainly has not done anything to nobody. She's doing this all for Melly. Cause Melly can't fake not being cold on the debate stage. No. I can't, I can't, I don't get it. And she drove a man to suicide in the process. And like, just her, that scene, the, there's many of them, where she's just like talking to the cameras and reporters, like grinning ear to ear, talking about Melly. I'm just like, mm, this is not sitting right with me. Melly, you're losing all of, all of what has made you Olivia Pope for Melly Grant to be president, not even yourself. Melly? She gets reckless and even more brazen. Why are you trying to fight with terrorists? You, you're trying to make Cyrus the president because of what like her dad did for her, but still like those people got your father. Th those people got your father. You're not winning against them. Your dad was just running you around like less than three months ago. You're not winning. You're not winning. You're not winning this, Olivia, but you still tried. You know, I admire persistence, even though it ends in, you know, death. And it, death. Drones are now blowing up in cities because y'all wanted to play tough. So, you know. It's for Melly Grant though, right? <laughs> like, if this were for any for else, I'd be like, because you know, I, sometimes people do terrible things. I can't do anything about that. Sometimes it's for a good reason, sometimes it's not. This is a really bad reason. Melly for president, bad reason. And then f the final chapter of Olivia is like command Olivia. Weird. Beyond weird. And it's even weird that she let it, that she got that far gone and didn't realize it even in the step, even in the first step of assuming the position of command of B613, didn't you, 
to try to and then destroy this thing that you're trying to control now multiple times. She became a shell of who she was, just killing people or taking names. And for what? For Melly? Including Quinn. Killing people for Melly. The Republic, my bad, my bad. It's the Republic, it's not just Melly. It's the Republic. Or so she thought. And then she became Melly's own friend, how the terms have table, they like started to depend on each other. And that would just end terribly, of course, because they're both like permanently in shambles. But we were able to escape the shambles by the literal backs of our hand because of your father. In the beginning of season seven, she was kind of, not just the beginning, kind of the whole time, she was simultaneously trying to heal her guilty conscience for a conscience for not telling nobody about that she like restarted B613, that she was literally running it by herself. But she always went down the path of death. So I'm like, are you really that guilty? Do you really feel bad that you didn't tell them anything? Because now you're jumping straight to shooting kids. Like, there's, there was no baby step in between. You assumed command and became command. Why did you want that? You think it will be better because you're running it? Why do you, this thing, this thing has stressed you out for seven years. You had to escape to an island to get away from it. But now you want to run it? It doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't make any sense to me. So those are all the characters. Oh, super fun. You being so deep is because you were his mistress. Five? That's sexist and insulting. You'd never suggest Scooter Libby was screwing Dick Cheney. Four, the lengths you're going to try to twist this into a conspiracy are cause for concern. You should speak to someone about that. Three, the president is awake and talking, and the suggestion that he isn't is partisan political crap that I thought you had enough integrity to rise above. Two, in the past three minutes, you've called me a criminal, a whore, an idiot, and a liar. So this is pretty much the last time we'll be speaking. So one, who I am or am not screwing. What I am or am not doing is no longer any of your damn business. This is so fun. Who knows how long this is? I'm very sorry if this is super long. So first question, you're gonna ask, what show I think is better? Grey's Anatomy or Scandal? I've seen How to Get Away with Murder. I've seen seasons one and two once. So I can't talk about, I don't know about anything about that show. <sighs> scandal at its best, I would say seasons one through most of four were peak scandal compared to peak Grey's, which is like seasons five through 12, I would say. I'm giving it to Grey's. No, Peak Grey's, Peak Grey's Anatomy is, is a different show. It's a different show. But if we're gonna compare like, just not just peaks, just compare whole shows to the other, I like Scandal better. It's better for a longer period of time in terms of like what the show is. You're not watching seven seasons of nonsense. There have been, what season is Grey's Anatomy on right now? There have been pr practically six seasons of nonsense of Grey's Anatomy on now. You're not getting seven seasons of nonsense for Scandal. You're getting maybe two, one and a half seasons of absolute nonsense, right? So it's better for a longer period of time. And I like how they did these fi this fixing scandals. I loved that. It was super cool. I was sad when they abandoned that for like Liv's White House um, plot line, but they needed to do it for the plot, obviously, to like switch the plot along. But all of the scandals became more or less about the White House or about the personal drama in there. And I was like, can we get one throwback to season one? Maybe Quinn has one client. They did it on very rare occasion. They sometimes did it, but I wish they did it a little bit more, bringing back the fact that like Livia was a fixer Quinn is the fixer now. We never saw her do much of nothing, like in comparison. So like Grey's is better at that. Like the show, even with how ridiculous the show is now, they still have a cool premise. They still have cool cases that come in. And like, cause like a cool, like a cool like fixing case in the case of Scandal or a cool like medical case in the case of Grey's Anatomy can give you a decent plot line for like an episode or maybe even three. So I'd wish they'd brought, hmm, kind, instead of like kidnapping Olivia or something else, they could have just done something else with her time, with her time, with Carrie Washington's time. Carrie Washington's time. All this time, no Emmy. No Emmy? 
Maybe if y'all hadn't gotten into ridiculousness, we would have had one, but whatever. I don't need to, I can't be mad forever, but I'm going to be. So what, when did Scandal get ridiculous and why did it? My first reason for this is, um, one is, first was season seven, Scandal became a bit ridiculous. <laughs> it got a bit ridiculous in terms of like grandiose things that wouldn't really make any sense. It got almost like a little bit, a little camp, right? Up until this point, Scandal was really dramatic, obviously, but still aired on the side of realistic. Even though it might be out there, this could kind of happen in real life, maybe. And then in season seven, it becomes one big hodgepodge of let's just go there. Let's become a soap opera and make everything as dramatic as humanly possible without letting things make total sense. They were literally yelling, literally yelling and screaming about killing people and murdering people loud as hell in the White House hallways and in the Oval Office. What they had done in seasons before is they were like, oh, we're in the Oval. We can't talk about B613 in the Oval Office. But in season seven, they were just, they just did anything. The woman at the desk sitting outside could definitely hear all of Melly and Olivia's conversations about like, um, them killing the president. They even had it recorded when they brought it to the Senate meetings. I'm like, that's why in every other season of the show, you guys had never spoken about B613 inside that Oval Office. But for the plot point we had to, see, no, I don't I don't like that. It just, Shonda, Shonda shows, the two that I watch, always do this. They creep over that line, but they creep over this line into soap opera territory. And I'm like, we're not that dramatic. We're not that dramatic. This show is not supposed to be that dramatic. It's not supposed to be that out there. It is out there because I mean, we've been spent like 17 seasons inside of one fucking hospital with like 10,000 deaths. But like, there's always a line that she jumps over and it becomes like, maybe we've gone too far, right? That's what happened in season seven. Also in season seven, No one in their right mind was expecting Scandal to be like the wokest show on television. Olivia Pope is standing Nixon in season two. None of us are like expecting that. So how it, that happened in season six slash seven, I was like, I'm not buying it. It feels disingenuous and it feels cheap. Fitz is your vessel for the Black Lives Matter representation in the show. Are you serious? Fitzgerald Grant III. Fitzgerald Grant III, that's your vessel? Sean, like the whole like social justice work in these shows makes me mad because I'm like, I mean, at least in this show was realistic. Marcus went from that to this, that that was realistic. Like Mark in, in season seven, I think it's like episode four, Marcus like yells at Fitz and it's like, you're a racist, basically. He doesn't say that, but he says some variation of it. The Republican president that he chose to go work for at a foundation. Oh, surprise, surprise. And then like Fitz actually clears him. He, because he's saying it, he's being racist, but he's kind of reading him for filth. He's like, Marcus, I thought, um, what happened to you? It's kind of interesting where you're working now, considering your past and background. Wouldn't think you'd be here working with me, Fitzgerald Grant III. And then these two 40 year old men or 50 year old men physically fight on the floor the stupidest episode of television. They physically fight on the floor. Go watch that episode. You'll want to tear your own eyes out. But then they band back together for social justice. Marcus and former president Fitzgerald Grant III. Stupid. One reason why season seven was so bad. That was stupid. Are you kidding me? No one, no one, Scandal did not give that off. You don't do it for six seasons, then all of a sudden do it in one season and make up for the pack six seasons of not doing it. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. Like you have Olivia standing Nixon in season two and then we have a change. No, it feels just ingenuous to me and I just, I don't like to see that. Like, no, Grey's Anatomy did the same thing too. So like, it's just on brand. And then finally, my reason for what when how skin got a bit ridiculous, the quality of the villains. So the first few seasons, we were more like case of the week. 
like, and I love that. I was sad, like I said before, when they abandoned the fixer part of Olivia's life. I liked it. It made sense for the, where the story was going, There, but there weren't really villains, like big villains in those besides like within an episode, like there were in the next couple of seasons. We went from Eli Pope and B613 to Paeus slash Luna Vargas to Olivia and B613 and then to Cyrus. Eli Pope is a really good villain and it's hard to follow him. They didn't succeed. The white people that followed him did not provide the same thrill of the chase, the same way that Eli Pope and the B613 of that era did. Fitz was a villain that wasn't even treated like a villain. Melly was treated like the villain, not even doing half of the shit that Fitz did. So y'all don't even know what you're doing. But that's on brand, right? Olivia turning into the bad parts of her mom and her dad was going to happen eventually. Here's my thing. I just wish it didn't happen so almost cheaply. Like, why did she take control of B613 really? Because she thought she could run it the best, but is that, that's not a good enough reason for me. Especially if that was the reason, why wouldn't she tell like Huck and Quinn and everyone? Why hide it? If the purpose was, oh, I can do better running this because I'm Olivia Pope, why would she hide it? That was the first sign of everything teetering into the unhinged category. And then she wasn't even fighting at her best. Olivia wasn't her strongest in season seven when she was the villain. When y'all finally made Olivia Pope the villain, she wasn't at her strongest. She was kind of damaged. It reminded me of Azula because I was like, how are you gonna make her the villain, the, 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 the like what everyone's fighting against her and she's at her weakest point right now. That's not fair. Olivia's at her, she's not at her strongest. She's fighting against Quinn and her dad and the White House. Like all of these pathetic people with no moral ground to stand on. That's my issue. How are you gonna tell Olivia that she shouldn't do the wrong thing where literally everyone on this show has blood on their hands? That's not a good enough reason for there to be a battle between Quinn and the White House and Olivia. There's not just you them being like Olivia is wrong. That's why we're going up against her. I no, that's not a good enough reason for me. For me, no, it's not. Like when has doing what's right been what OPA or Quinn PA wants to do or what the White House wanted to do? Doing what's right since when? only when it comes to Olivia? Don't like that. Don't like that. I don't mind Cyrus as the final boss villain. He was better than Eli for the 15,000th time. Like when they brought Eli back during the whole Paeus thing, he was pathetic. So I was like, we don't need to see him as a villain ever again. Cyrus being it was a choice. Cyrus pulled it off, barely. I don't like how they wasted everyone's time making Olivia the one, if you weren't gonna stick with that, you are just gonna give it to Cyrus immediately. Jake being the one to go to jail is really funny to me. Cyrus really went free. Cyrus has never, mm, he was in prison, he was. Really just went free. And he's just resigned and everything's fine now. Cyrus will never pick that back up again. Someone like Cyrus does not res retire. Someone like Cyrus does not resign. Remember the last time he got like asked to leave by Fitz? He was back in there the next day, tricking Fitz. Fitz is, a, is an idiot though, Melly is not. Who does this in a show? Hmm, now I'm doing it. I don't wear necklaces for this reason. So I just think Scandal's qualities of villains went down. Especially when you don't even give my sister Olivia a fighting chance to be a good villain, your quality of villains went down and that kind of was why the reason, in my opinion, why the show kind of got a bit ridiculous. The show is only as good as its villain. And if the villain sucks, there's no reason for anyone to be fighting against them. Quinn, 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 Huck, Abby, and Charlie, and Marcus. Fight against Olivia because what she's doing is wrong. Not good enough of a reason for me. There wasn't a high enough stake. Because it wasn't at first about saving Olivia from herself. That wasn't it at first. It was just taking her down because what she was doing was wrong. Which I don't get. That's not a, that's not a reason. That's not a reason for y'all to be fighting in battle. That's not a reason. Or at least a good enough one. Which is why it was so like 
bad, which is why it was so like average compared to Peak Scandal. Like seasons one through like half of four was heavy hitters, and y'all just said no. But also, it's hard to follow Eli Pope. The Eli Pope of the first couple of seasons. It's hard to follow that. It's hard to follow that. So you know, you guys tried. So yeah. Wow, I'm done. That's the end of my video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. That was everything wrong with Scandal. You see how it's just a video title? <laughs> you see how it's just a video title? Like, calm down. So yeah, that's the end of my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourself. <sighs> sorry if this was long. I don't know how long this is. I don't know until I ever sit down and edited it, so I'm sorry. But. Whew. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you would like to follow me on social media, here's my Twitter and my Instagram. Go have fun. Enjoy yourself on there. And while you're here, check out some of my other Everything is Wrong lists, which I'll put another or some of my recent videos. I posted a video yesterday talking about the Grammys. If you want to watch that, if you want to watch that, just do whatever you want. Live your life free and fun. And I hope you guys are staying healthy and safe inside your homes the best you can. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Wow, I've been talking for a long time. That's why I don't know what to do right now. I don't know how to end it. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye.